I'm going to let Terry explain more about this. Join in welcoming Sarah Rizzamico. So it seems like the perfect time for us to talk a little bit about math. Yeah. So in, 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 all, in all fairness today, guys, what I'm about to show you is the product of over two months' worth of work with some of the top data scientists and applied statisticians in the country, um, specifically those who specialize in election science. Uh, it's important for a couple of reasons. It's important, number one, because this year, in the session, the state legislature will consider what the next voting system in the state of Georgia will be. And I am telling you today, that system needs to be hand-marked, paper ballots, and nothing less for the people of Georgia. And I'm going to show you why. And Democrats, here's the thing. It is our party that will be on the front lines of this debate. Yes. It is our party that's advocating for the institutions of democracy, whether it's the free press or access to the ballot box or the right to have the assurance that your vote is fairly and accurately tabulated every time you wait in line to vote. Yes. And until we know what happened in this anomaly, I don't think we can buy another generation of machine that isn't hand-marked paper ballots with an optical scanner. So we're going to go quickly. Some of you have seen a great story that Jim Galloway did in the AJC. If you haven't read it, I highly encourage it, especially for those of you serving in the state legislature. It outlines this issue very well. Let's go quick. Uh, we have run, these are the midterm elections, the gray is 2010. The Red is 2014, and the blue is 2018 midterms. This is the drop-off, in other words, the how many people voted for governor and then didn't vote for lieutenant governor. And if you were to go back through 10 years of elections anywhere in the country, you would see curves, what we call a decay curve. You know, as you move down the ballot, typically each race loses some votes. But if you were to go back for 10 years in Georgia elections, every decay curve or drop-off curve that you see would look like the gray and the red lines. It's essentially a gently sloping curve, yeah? I want you to look at the giant vampire fang in the blue line. That is the drop-off in the 2018 election for the lieutenant governor of Georgia. And if the curve were in the correct place, in order for you to believe that that occurred naturally, you have to believe that Democrats in places like Clayton County and Fulton County and DeKalb County voted for governor, skipped the lieutenant governor's race, and then voted the rest of the ticket. And you have to believe that about 138,000 of them did that. That is what that drop-off represents. So we knew on election night there was an anomaly, and being somebody who was a bit of a Nancy Drew novel fanatic growing up, and also a bit of a math nerd, I immediately started to dig in and see if we could find out what happened. So this is another look at drop-off by race. Each colored line represents one of your statewide candidates. And you can see the blue line that's significantly below all of the others. That's the lieutenant governor's race. It shouldn't look like this. In fact, if you went back through other elections, whether it's in Georgia or anywhere across the country, it should look like those top lines that are neatly bunched together, right? So let's go to the next one. We started to look at, I called a friend who's a professor at the Harvard Business School. In fact, she was the head of the MBA program there. And I said, we found a large undervote. What do you think? And she said, well, it depends. Where did it come from? And I thought that's a great question to ask. Each of these bubbles represents one of Georgia's 159 counties. This is the 2014 midterm drop off from the governor's race to the lieutenant governor's. And do you see how they're all tightly bunched together between the two solid black lines? That's a 2% range of drop off. That's completely normal. If you ran this for the statewide offices for any other election other than mine for the last 10 years in Georgia, this is what it would look like. They're tightly bunched together in a narrow range, effectively a horizontal curve. Let's go to the next one. 
This is what it looks like in my race. Yeah, that's not normal. You don't have to be good at math to understand that. <laughs> Um, in fact, of the 159 counties in Georgia, you'll notice that only one, that's Bartow County, for those of you from Bartow, great job. Uh, that's Bartow County, County is the only one that fell in the normal range of drop-off. So in other words, 158 out of 159 counties had anomalous drop-off in my race. Let's go to the next one. So then we started to look, we know this comes from heavily Democratic, I'm sorry, can we go back one real fast? Let me tell you why this matters to this room. That far right bubble all the way to the end, that's Clayton County. The next two are Fulton and DeKalb. And do you see how the slope of the curve is much more dramatic than the first one where it was essentially horizontal? That tells us that this anomaly comes from the top Democratic counties. So in other words, if it were just something that happened, the glitch, we would expect it to affect red and blue counties the same, but that's not what happened. What happened is this anomaly comes in Democratic counties. Let's go to the next. And then I called a friend who has his PhD in election data science from MIT, and I told him what happened, could he look at our data? And he said, yes. And 45 minutes later, he called me back and said, you're right, it's an anomaly. I've never seen one this large, but it's worse than that. And I thought, well, how can it get worse for missing like 140,000 votes? Um, and he said, the problem is, in your race, it only happens on the machines. In paper ballots, whether they're absentee votes or whether they're provisional ballots, you don't have any anomalous drop-off. It's only on those touchscreen DRA voting machines. So what you're looking at uh, right here is the 2014 midterm election, the drop-off from governor to lieutenant governor by mode of vote. So the red line is absentee paper ballots, the gray is advanced in-person voting on the machines, and the blue is election day voting on the machines. And do you see how the curves are all shaped the same? They should be like that, because it shouldn't matter if you vote on paper or a machine, you still vote for the same offices. By the way, is there anyone in here who doesn't do that? You vote differently when you use a paper ballot. You skip more races. Okay, just checking. So that's 2014, that's what it should look like, that's what it looks like in elections across the country for the last several decades. Let's show them mine. Woo! This is my race. Yeah, see the funny thing is, is that red line is still paper absentee ballots and it's completely normally shaped. The problem is the two lines, blue and gray, that represent electronic DRE touchscreen voting machines, they have highly anomalous drop-off. And you know, here's the thing, if there were some point in time where the political fortunes change, for me or for the ticket, um, you wouldn't see this, right? Because that gray line, the advanced voting on machines, those machine ballots are being cast at the same time, the red line, the paper absentee ballots are being cast. So what you have here is a problem an anomalous, something we didn't expect, anomalous drop-off in votes, tens of thousands of votes, as many as 138,000, only in Democratic counties, only for the Democratic candidate, and only on the voting machines. So we started to look at what could this be. And let's, let me show you one last cut of the data, and then once DeBose moves on, I'll come back up and tell you a little bit more about what we know. So the last thing, the last graph that I'm going to show you, and I apologize we're going super quick here, but I will answer questions. Of, I'll be around all day if you have them. Each of these dots represents a county. The blue dots, not surprisingly, are mine. The red dots were my former opponents. On the x-axis across the bottom of the page is the percentage of vote that the woman who should have been our governor got in those counties, Stacey Abrams. And on the y-axis, vertically, is what we call drop-off. So again, how many votes were lost from one position on the ballot to the next? And you'll notice in the top left corner, those are negative drop-off. Those blue dots represent crossover voters in deep red rural counties in the lieutenant governor's race. We don't know if those are Kemp Amico voters or Metz Amico voters, but the math allows us to break down crossover voters. And then a funny thing happens. What this should look like is that those dots gently descend down to about the 98th or 99th percentile, right below Stacy, right? 
And in fact, you can see the red dots kind of hover in effectively a flat line. That's what it should look like. But instead of that happening, there's this ridiculous, anomalous trigger point where when Stacey Abrams gets more than 25% of the vote in a given county, my drop-off rate increases by 10%. Instantaneous. And so we hired uh, the foremost expert in election data science from Dartmouth uh, University, Dartmouth College, uh, Michael Herod, he has more credentials in statistics than I could possibly tell you if I stayed here all day. And we sent this data to him. And I said, here is what happened, here is what we found. I would like you as an outsider to tell me whether we're crazy. And he sent it back to us uh, and said the same thing that the MIT Elections Lab folks had said. Said the same thing that the Harvard Business School professor had said. I've never seen an anomaly this large in my entire career. This is a man who's testified in court cases around the country, in state legislatures around the country, and he said there is simply no explanation for a 450% increase in drop-off simply because you voted by touching a machine. Well, I, I didn't say that. <laughs> but what I can tell you is if there were a problem with ballot design in the lieutenant governor's race, where it, were, it was hard to find our race on the ballot, and we have more than 8,000 complaints that my name wasn't on the ballot, that I was hard to find, that I was on a different screen than my opponent and the gubernatorial candidates. But even if all of that were true, if the race were hard to find, if it didn't just impact me, do you see how those curves kind of diverge like a crocodile mouth like this? If we were hard to find as a race, as opposed to targeting the Democratic candidate in this race, those curves would be the same shape. But instead, what you see is that they diverge, the crocodile mouth. That means in places, in the top right, again, Fulton, Clayton, and DeKalb, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the more Democratic county the county is, the more Abrams, Duncan voters suddenly appear. Yeah, right. Wow. <laughs> It is a most unusual phenomenon. And what I will say is I'm not here to assign motive. I've been very, very careful to validate this. We have spent a small fortune with attorneys and data scientists understanding what the heck this is. And every explanation the Secretary of State or the other side has offered does not explain why this only happened on those machines. It does not explain why it only affected the Democratic candidate. And it does not explain why those missing votes exclusively come from Democratic counties. So the reason we're here today is not to rehash. I'm not asking for a change in outcome. In fact, I chose not to be a plaintiff in the lawsuit that's contesting my election for one reason, and one reason only. I think we have to remove the question of outcome so that we can talk about democracy. Yes. Because here's the thing, we didn't get the outcomes we wanted this year in all cases. But make no mistake, this was not a loss. We pulled hundreds of thousands of first-time voters to the polls. We, we got people from all walks of life in all 159 counties to go out with something to vote for instead of someone to vote against. And they waited in hours and hours of lines, some of them in dark shopping malls, and late at night with small children on their hip or in the rain. And we need them to come back. And we need them to have the confidence that when they come back and when they cast their ballot, the work we've done for the last several years was not in vain. We need them to have the confidence their vote not only will be heard, it will be counted and accurately. And until somebody can explain how this magical, mysterious drop-off only affects Democrats in Democratic counties and only on voting machines, it is absolutely irresponsible for this state to spend $150 million on new versions of this machine. So we're talking about it today because we need you guys to call your representatives, we need you to be advocates, we need you to explain. This is all on our website. We've made it all public, guys. We're not hiding anything. We need you to go out and tell people why this matters. 
Because the thing is, is we can no longer count on our Republican colleagues yeah. to advocate for democratic institutions. We are facing a Republican Party that calls the press the enemy of the people, that doesn't understand a co-equal branch with the judiciary and the legislature at the federal level, although Speaker Pelosi gave them a real education on that. <laughs> by a woman in stilettos from San Francisco on the Constitution was very satisfying. We are not facing Republicans right now who believe in those institutions that have held this union together for more than two centuries. And if we don't do this, if we don't pick up the ball and run with it, if we don't shout from the rooftops why this matters, if we don't demand, better even when people don't want to hear it, there is no one else who will rise up and talk about this. So I'm not asking for a change in outcome. I'm asking for a change in urgency. I'm asking for a change in your motivation. I'm asking for a change in behavior. I want you to go out and tell people how much this matters. I want you to tell them it's not about a race. It's about democracy, it's about who we are as a people, and I want you to hold their feet to the fire for anybody who tells you that spending $150 million on these machines is somehow better than hand-marked paper ballots and a $30 million optical scanner. You tell them until they can explain this, how dare they? How dare they insult our democracy further? How dare they continue to undermine our institutions? And how dare they assume that we won't know any better and we won't stand up and demand that they do a better job. So I will be here later, but that is the overview and I really appreciate you guys listening.